Here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman on this second anniversary of the execution of Troy Davis that took place September 21, 2011, in Jackson, Georgia, at the death row prison there. Our guests are Ben Jealous, head of the NAACP, Kim Davis, Troy Davis' sister, and Jen Marlowe, who's just written a book about Troy Davis called I Am Troy Davis. Could you read a page from the book, Jen? Sure. I'd be happy to. Um, I'll read a passage that was from December 1993, so it was just a few years after Troy's conviction when he was sent to death row, and this was actually one of the first executions um, on George's death row that Troy lived through. Troy had never intended to make friends on death row, but there was something disarming about Chris Berger. Chris was tall, trim, strong, and gave off a tough demeanor, but he showed warmth and affection to his friends. He sketched beautifully with colored pencils, often sending his drawings to his mother, to whom he was devoted. He was older than Troy by more than 10 years, but there was something vulnerable and childlike about him, perhaps stemming from his history of severe childhood abuse. Chris had been only 17 years old when he had participated in the murder of Roger Honeycutt. When his execution date was set for December 7, 1993, he confessed to Troy how frightened he was. Troy saw the guards parading Chris sadistically in front of the other death row inmates on the evening of December 7th, before leading him to the execution chamber to strap him into the electric chair. Troy sat in his cell, hunched over on his bed, waiting for the horrifying moment when the lights would flicker, indicating that a high-voltage current of electricity was coursing through Chris's body. Every man on the row twitched in silent agony when the flickering began at 9.50 p.m. Troy knelt on the hard floor, gripping the steel frame of his bed tightly, and prayed for his friend. Only later did he learn that Chris Berger's last words had been an apology to everyone he had ever hurt and a plea for forgiveness. One of the guards who had paraded Chris leaned against the bars of Troy's cell. Hey, Davis, Troy heard the guard say. Troy looked up. Yeah? How'd you like some fries to go with your burger? Troy resolved never to become quite so close to anyone else on death row again. Jen Marlowe reading from I Am Troy Davis. Ben, you are leading a campaign against the death penalty in the United States. What are the other campaigns that the NAACP is waging right now? You know, in this city, we continue to really fight to stamp out racial profiling. Here in New yeah. York. The campaign against Stop and Frisk has been one of our biggest national priorities. We uh, stay focused on a whole range of issues, but the chief one for us right now is defending voting rights. Our, our ability to defend all of our other rights is ultimately leveraged on our ability to uh, defend our right to vote and exercise our right to vote. And the attack that it's come on that it's come under has been withering. Uh, so we're very much focused right now on, on restoring Section 4 of the Voting Rights Act, uh, stopping voter suppression bills across the country, and expanding voting rights wherever we can. The good news is that this year we're actually winning more battles to expand voting rights at the state level um, than we are uh, losing them against those who would like suppress where? them. Uh, a big victory last year in Maryland. We've had uh, several uh, in, in the West and in, in the North. I mean, unfortunately, voting rights right now is sort of very state by state. Uh, and in those states that are uh, dominated by far right wing conservatives, that's, that's, that's where we're fighting. Um, uh, but in those other states, we've decided just to focus on winning, making sure we have early voting and same day registration. And yet, isn't it also being whittled away in states like Florida, such oh, a key you know, Florida, state? Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, I mean, you know, and then, you know, the, the uh, U.S. Supreme Court with uh, the hobbling of uh, Section 4, truly really hobbles of Section 5 and makes us quite vulnerable in the former Confederacy. But the good thing is that uh, people are fighting and we're winning and we believe that we have a real chance in the next 12 months to uh, restore Section 4 of the Voting Rights Act. The Stand Your Ground laws and the Trayvon Martin case. Yes. Um, George Zimmerman um, was handcuffed September 9th. Um, his wife had accused him of punching her father in the right. face and said she was going to be divorcing him, that she was afraid of him. He went to visit the gun factory uh, where the gun was made that he used, that he used to kill Trayvon yeah. Martin. I, you know, George, George Zimmerman— um, is the, is the poster child for why we ought to get rid of stand-your-ground laws. 
uh, is a self-appointed vigilante who killed a, an innocent boy uh, because of the fears in his mind. Nothing that the boy was, was, was doing for being black and walking down the street. And I think we can look forward, um, starting probably in 2015, when the states reconvene for their legislative sessions to repealing standard ground laws in many states. In the meantime, our biggest success has been stopping the spread of them. And that's just as important. 